a little technical difficulty here. So at some point, uh, someone will appear with a cord and we will hook things up and make things happen that way. In the meantime, um, okay. in the meantime, we'll shout. <laughs> Yeah, that one, Nikki, yours works. Uh, anyway, I guess we're loud. Hmm? Okay, so, good morning. I hope everybody's had coffee. It took me a while to find the coffee. Um, I'm Nikki Wheeler Nicholson, and my grandfather started DC Comics. And um, he basically started the whole comic book business. There were people who did original scripts and comics before him, but he's really the foundation of the comics that lasted and are still with us. So he's really the grandfather of, of the comic book industry. Uh, my background is that I got interested in my grandfather's history about 20 years ago, and I started researching his life and his work. And I particularly was interested in the pulps that he wrote, because I'm a writer as well. So that was what was my interest. And uh, I have some, oh, it looks like we've got a cord. Yay! Yay! Woo! Uh, OK, so uh, I have a lot of slides here. We're not, I'm not going to do any formal thing with them. I just want you to be able to see some images. And um, some of the images will be from my grandfather's early period. And then uh, I'm gonna, all of these ladies are going to talk about themselves and what they do. And then we're going to open it up and just have an informal in whatever questions you have. And we'll just chat about women in comics, which is a pretty big subject to cover in a very short amount of time. So we'll just hit on some things and answer questions that you're interested in. Uh, so I am writing a biography of my grandfather with Gerard Jones. And uh, some of you may know that Harry Donenfeld, whose grandfather ended up with my grandfather's company, uh, and I are going to have a conversation with Gerard tomorrow. And that should be a lot of fun. Harry is great. I really like him a lot. Uh, and uh, uh, so that's enough about me. OK. Ms. Tree. Hi. I see this is your work again. Yes, it is. It is. It's, oh, my God, you can hear me? Yes. Yeah. OK. Um, all right. OK, I'm Trina Robbins, and I think most of you, well, maybe you have to. I've been in comics since we engraved them in stone. I started, I started as an underground cartoonist um, in, a, in a field in which there were me and one other woman in San Francisco drawing comics and everyone else was guys. And it was a very, very male-dominated industry, and it was more than that. It was an extremely misogynistic industry. Um, so, Eventually, well, I was already a feminist, but eventually, um, well, I became a historian. Okay, you know, long story short, I became a historian, and I am basically generally recognized as the. Hey, shh, quiet! I know. <laughs> I'm generally recognized as the authority on women cartoonists early 20th century, late 19th century even, um, women that the guys never write about. When the guys write comics histories, they want to talk about Jack Kirby and Spider-Man and the Hulk. And um, there were hundreds of incredible, talented women cartoonists who drew comics in the early 20th century that nobody knew about until I started writing about them. And I've rediscovered and repopularized artists like Lily Renee, Nell Brinkley, and Tarby Mills. And I'm still doing that. Um, I also was one, oh yeah, I produced the very first, in 1970, the very first old woman comic book at Amy Babe Comics, um, because, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, oh, I love you 
t shirt. Feminist Comic Book Club of San Diego. Um, what can I do to get a copy? I'll give you one. Oh, thank you. Thank you. A small please. <laughs> even a medium. Even a medium. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Anyway, I produced that comic, you know, just because it was such a misogynistic, male-dominated field. And then two years later, I was one of the founding mothers of women's comics, which was the longest ongoing all-woman comics anthology, lasting from 72 to 92. I have cards here, um, because Fanta Graphics is publishing the collective women's comics and the one-shot date, me babe, and that is coming out. Um, in April, and we're doing a signing in San Francisco, if anybody is Bay Area local, um, on April 12th, and we'll be doing a big signing at the San Diego Con in July, so take cards. I have some, uh, once these guys get this going, I have, I have some nice images of some of the things that Trina was talking about, um, the cover of It Ain't Me Babe, and some other things, the uh, Tarpe Mills, and so hopefully they'll get it hooked up before this is over. Okay, Miss Cleaner. I'm pretty in ink. Yeah, my latest. Um, it's out of print already, but you can find it for outrageous prices on Amazon.com. It's my, my last and definitive. Thank you so much. Can I hire you? <laughs> my final and definitive history of, of women cartoonists. Okay, my name is Mary Fleener, and I come from sort of a different perspective in the women in comics category. Um, I started drawing about 1984, and I started self-publishing, and uh, that was part of the big mini-comic movement that happened at that time. Um, unlike Trina, I think by the time the 80s rolled around, it was pretty nice to be a woman in cartooning. Um, we were all welcomed, it seemed to me. I met all the people I know today by trading mini comics and the anthologies that were around at the time that were sort of the undergrounds that I liked were Weirdo and Rip Off Press and Women's, of course. And a lot of these anthologies would review these little mini comics. And so you would read six or seven reviews, send the people a couple of quarters, then you get a little comic in the mail and you've made a friend. And that's sort of how I got into the um, the network of car cartooning. And then I started getting published in the anthologies like Women's and Tits and Clips and um, Weirdo, things like that. And I, um, I'm, I'm happy that people like Trina got the ball rolling because, like I said, for people like me, I felt accepted, I never felt like an outsider at all. Um, but my focus was always underground comics. I was never really interested in the superhero world because, in my opinion, there was already a lot of people that could draw really good. And so my, my focus was to try to be original. Coming from a fine art background like I did, I was a printmaker in college and my mother was an artist. And, um, you know, on that subject too, I'm gonna make a plug for mom because she's 95, 94 now. And a woman named Mindy Johnson from Disney is doing a book called Ink and Paint. And it's the women in the animation department at Disney during the war. And my mother happened to work for Disney from 1941 to 43 while my dad was in North Africa. She didn't see him for two whole years, so when he came back, she went with him to Florida. My brother and I were born shortly thereafter. Uh, but she could have, she was one of the first women to be hired. She was promoted to the animation department within a month and a half. And despite what people have said about Disney, about the, you've seen the rejection letters, I'm sure, on the internet of like, we don't hire women. Well, they did start hiring women. So this book will be out, I think, this winter, 2016, and there'll be a chapter maybe about my mom in there, which is kind of neat. And, um, and she, actually, when she worked there, she took a lot of art out of the trash in between drawing cells, stuff they just threw away. And I now own about 125 pieces of art from that era, which is what, amazing because the Disney cells, uh, I mean, the, the Dumbo cells, we're all washed because there was a shortage of acetate then. So there's hardly any. If you see any uh, Dumbo cells on eBay and stuff, they're probably fake. This is from Mindy Johnson. She's the head of the foreign distribution there at Disney, and she wrote a book on Tinkerbell, which you probably all have seen about the history of how they uh, make her. Anyway, back to me. <laughs> um, 
I uh, have been trying to work on a book about music, a graphic novel, for about 10 years now. Um, but I keep getting involved with doing art shows, and I also play music. But there's a terrific magazine called Mineshaft that's uh, put out by this couple in North Carolina. And they're keeping sort of the underground style alive. They're, you know, Crumb has done a lot of covers, Robert Armstrong, uh, terrific new talent like uh, Christoph Mueller, uh, Bill Cook, uh, people who are, are cross-hatching maniacs. And so I'm real honored to be uh, associated with these guys. In fact, here's a It'll be the next issues coming out in April. It'll, be, it'll debut at the Zine Machine in North Carolina on uh, April 16th.